is we stay here in our own little bubble in the West and we just have this conversation and you know the speakers they talk a good talk and the moderator like moderates so fabulously then what happens afterwards what actual change are we affecting afterwards I've been to so many people just come and like you know wear the best suit and the, the nicest dresses and like I said talk to good talk and what happens afterwards what kind of action are we really taking that's my problem with it I respect people who actually say, you know what, I have learned this, like I said earlier, and I'm going to take what I've learned back home to do something with it. So again, like I said, I understand that these conversations are happening, we're doing something, but we need to start actualizing these things. We need to start doing something. And this leads me to a quote by my um, cousin, who I love so dearly, Cheesy. He said this to me, he said, positive change, in my opinion, will only occur in society if most people try to do the right thing at the right time within their ecosystem, no matter how small. So I'm not asking you to fix Africa. Africa is big. <laughs> how are we gonna fix everything? But what we can do is do the little we can, like he said here, no matter how small, at the right time within your ecosystem, your strength, whatever it is, your talent, Right, like I mentioned earlier, start a program, empower the kids, a lot of them online, partner with schools, partner with, you know, companies. Oh, they, they, once they hear you're from the West, oh, they, they want to work with you. Host like financial literacy programs. You know, Africans in diaspora, we haven't fully grasped the idea of financial literacy. How much more Africans in Africa? That's something that we need to teach more people. Financial literacy, how to manage your wealth. My biggest problem with a lot of Africans too is we become consumers and not creators. So we just consume the product from the West and what they do, but we don't want to create. So like millennials, this is our time to rise up. And if you're doing something, I really commend you. Let's connect afterwards. I want to hear from you. I want to hear what you're doing. I love it. I feel empowered when I see people doing great things on the continent. And there's so many people doing that already. And so it makes me really just think, when you look at, when you look at Africa right now, who is somebody that you can say is on that level as Obama, right? And I said this in my test speech, where is the Kwame Nkrumah of our time? You know Kwame, right? Where's the Chinua Achebe? Where's the Nelson Mandela? Where are those people? Don't you guys think about these things? Because I know I have sleepless nights thinking about how are we going to develop and create like great people? We are great, but we need somebody on that level for Africa. We've learned so much here. It's time to take it back home now. So I end with this quote from CNN um, that I found, which I, I think is just so powerful. It really just kind of sums up everything I'm trying to say. No matter how they arrived in their adopted country, diasporans bring a distinct perspective to the discourse on Africa because they have experienced both worlds and can serve as a bridge in fostering greater understanding between the continent and the adopted country. So again, I'm not here to bash or yell or anything. Like I told you guys, my talk is now like theoretical and analytical, what you guys might be used to. I just really wanted to share my heart and just kind of give like little, little tips here and there in terms of finances and how we can contribute back home invest in something, employ people. You're never too young to buy a land. You're never too young to, to start having employees and people working for you and investing back home. 